Hey guys, Dave from the Rocky Foreign Arts Bond Arts hanging out with the Rockets Ted. And today we delve back into the player's handbook with our intro into D and D. We're going to be talking about conditions. I want to thank Easy Roller Dice for sponsoring this video. Whether it's your first set of dice or your one millionth set of dice, Easy Roller Dice for all your dice rolling needs. Down in the description below, you can find easyrollerdice.com backslash nerdarchy, as well as a one-time coupon code that's going to give you 20% off. Go get some Easy Roller Dice. All right, so we're going to continue with our Intro to D&D series. This time, we're jumping again to the back of the book, page 290, Appendix A, Conditions. So most of this stuff sucks if it happens to you. Uh, it's good if you do it to your enemies, though. Absolutely. So... Let, let's let's boil it down. What are what are conditions and why are they important? Okay, so conditions are status effects that happen during the game, either to you or you're doing them to someone else. Generally, for them to happen, something has to cause them, and you generally have to fail a saving throw. So, if you're playing video games or you you've seen other things, these are a grouping of deficits or most most cases penalties that happen when a certain effect is caused and we're going to go through the list and describe where these things might come up in your game we're not going to read through what what the status effects are and what they do to you just how they how they come about in in the course of play okay so how many status effects are there there are 14 status effects in the player's handbook over the course of several pages. Now, of those 14, how many of them are good for you? One. One. <laughs> there, there is a single thing that is good if you, are, if you have got this condition. Everything else is a problem. It's a challenge for you. Okay, so what are these 14 conditions? Uh, all right, so our first one is blinded. It's pretty self-explanatory. We got charmed, deafened, frightened, grappled, Incapacitated, invisible, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, restrained, stunned, and unconscious. Now, there's a, over, a lot of overlap when it comes to conditions. So, essentially, if you have certain conditions on you, you have a bunch of them on you. You don't really have a choice. For instance, if you're unconscious, you're going to be prone and incapacitated and maybe some several other things as well. Exactly. So, we'll start in the beginning. We'll go alphabetical order and talk about... What these effects are, and you know the most common sources of them. I think blinded is our first one. Right now, as with many of these different different effects, there are spells that can cause this. Blindness, deafness is a single spell, and one of the options is to cause the the target to become blind. Well, how about one of the simplest of all? Your light source goes out, and you do not have dark vision. That that's exactly right. Not not having light causes you to be blind because if you don't have dark vision you very well can't see and i'm also for fairly certain there are certain mon monsters that can blind you as well absolutely the uh the mummy lord actually has a blinding dust that it can that it can send out causing you to actually be blind should you fail your saving throw by gygax i knew there had to be at least one <laughs> now we're not going to go through every single option within the player's handbook monster manual we're just giving you some examples of where that might come about. So the, mo the most common uh, ill effect of having a status effect is getting disadvantaged to a thing or another. So they keep in mind, or offering advantage to other people that are like attacking you and stuff like that. So, so blind it would be fall right into that category, I think. So next we have charm. Next, next we have charmed. And there's a cut, simple cut and dry spell, charm person. It's self-explanatory. You fail your saving throw. You, you've been charmed. And as you would guess, there are, of course, monsters that can, that can cause this one. And since we're in the Halloween season, what would be better than a... Vampire. So it's, it's, it's a classic. It's, a, it's, you know, common trope. The va you gaze into the vampire's eyes and he hypnotizes you. That would be a charming effect. Now, if you want to go a little bit higher on the spell pool, you've got Dominate Person, and you can even go so far as Geese, and these things will will wind up giving the target the charmed condition. Uh, we already talked about uh, Blinded. Uh, Deafened is very similar. There's you know, it, And you get that condition in similar ways. 
So I already mentioned the Blindness Deafness spell. They wrap that up into one spell, but as I said earlier, you can choose either option when you cast that spell, and voila, your, your target can be deafened. There are not many monsters, and none that I could find in the, in, in the monster manual that causes a, a deafening, but if you're a DM and you wish to go down that road, you could create a, a bird that offers up a shriek that with a failed saving throw, your, the targets of said shriek could be deafened. And even though there aren't any monsters in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons that have that yet, in the D&D lore as a whole, there definitely were monsters that did do that. Absolutely. So, so that brings us to the next one, and that's Frightened. Oh, fr frightened is one of the easiest things to, to actually span out over the course of D&D. Most big monsters, most, most things that are are huge and terrifying, as you would imagine, have the ability to cause fear. And they do so just by existing or just by looking at, at people. So you've got your dragons. You've got the legendary monster of the Tarrasque. You've got your pit fiend. These things just give off a frightful presence to anything around it. There's just a ton of spells that'll do the same thing. Fear spell, perhaps. <laughs> uh, just to name one off the top of my head. So you won't have to look far as a DM if you want to frighten your players. And if you're a player playing, your DM has this available to him almost all the time. Absolutely. So next we get into Grappled. And this this one should should come pretty easily. If something is going to try and grab you or wrestle with you, you're going to be Grappled. Yeah, Grappled is very common, just like... The Frightened is very common. Many monsters that you would expect, if they have tentacles or if they do some kind of uh, bite and swallow attack, things like that are definitely going to grapple you. Uh, one, one of my favorites, a goodie, but oldie, is the Roper. Now, if you're a DM and you've got a strong monster and your players are, are not heavy on the strength, going going and grappling them so that your so that their allies have the ability to attack with advantage is a common tactic for big and stupid monsters. Uh, the next one is really bad, incapacitated. You do not want this to happen to you. So you're not you're not uh you're not unconscious, but incapacitated, you're not getting to do anything. So you have to be really careful about getting uh getting down to this one. And there are of course spells and monsters that can cause this one. And Tasha's Hideous Laughter is right at the top of the charts. It's a low-level spell, but just because you're a uh, powerful spellcaster doesn't mean you want to roll out those lower-level spells. Yeah, there's also other plenty of other spells that do this as well. And as Ted stated, you're not unconscious, but you might as well be. So there's uh, also a magic item, Dust of Sneezing and Choking that can cause this this effect as well. So you could you could live it literally as a GM, give it to any humanoid or monstrous humanoid and Im implore it against your party. Or use it as a trap. Yeah, you know, one of the interesting things about the incapacitated condition too is is both of those examples that you use. T Tasha says hideous laughter is you're rolling around on the ground and you can't do anything but that and you're laughing, right? The other one, uh, dust of choking and sneezing, is just that. You're coughing, you're sneezing. Uh, this, you're, all of your actions are taken up by these things. Well, when you think incapacitated, you think, well, I can't move, I can't do anything. But in both the instances that you actually used, you're actually moving around a lot and doing a lot of things. It's just you can't do any of the things you want to. So Luke Skywalker being uh, you know, Sith Lightning in Return of the Jedi, he would clearly be incapacitated. Excellent example. So the next we move on to Invisible. And this is, as, as we said, the only positive condition that's within 5th edition D&D. And here it's to your advantage. It's almost like a, a, a reverse blind, right? Because they're essentially blind to your presence. So you, you can get this via spells. You can get this via, via magic items. And... You know, there there is of course the the ye old monster, the invisible stalker. So you, you he's already invisible. He's already ready to go. So yeah, you got it on both on both sides. So next we're gonna move on to paralyzed, and here is what you would expect from the whole incapacitated. Here you literally are frozen, right? And then 
Incapacitate falls underneath of Paralyzed. So you're going to get a lot of these tree effects where it's like, oh, if this one thing happens to you, this one effect happens to you, the condition, all these other conditions apply as well. So, you, you know, you can just start with the worst and then work your way down from there. Paralyzed, plenty of monsters are going to do this to you. Ghouls, guests, carrion crawlers were the original creepy crawlers that would do this to you from way back when. And all of those are low-level monsters, very easy to get those kind of conditions right, right out of the right out of the gate you know right out of your first starting adventures uh and let's not you know leave off from the spells easy example is hold person correct and with that moving on from there we have petrification and this this literally is you know full of mythology everybody's heard of the medusa the gorgon these are monsters that have the ability to literally turn your flesh to stone and speaking of flesh to stone there's a spell that's labeled exactly as. So these things will, will cause you to become stone, and without powerful magic to undo it, you are just now a statue. But fortunately, there are even... Mon well, fortunately or unfortunately, <laughs> there are even monsters that temporarily can petrify you, like the Coctress, a very, very low-level, weak monster. But this chicken will leave you stoned in your tracks. Next, we move on to probably the most common condition that comes up within 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, and that's poisoned. There, There is plenty of monsters that can poison you. Even just think about the real world. Think of mon or animals, I should say, not monsters, that have venoms and poisons. Well, yeah, uh, the fantasy world has all those plus. So you, you take your giant snakes, you take your spiders. Most things in 5th edition that has the ability to have a venom attack, a poisonous attack, not only are you going to take the extra damage, but you're going to have to possibly stave off this condition of being poisoned. And once you're poisoned, most things that you try to do become that much harder. Yes, and to, to for clarification, there are some things will do poison damage, some things will give you the poison condition, and some things will do both. Exactly. Uh, and of course, since I said in most cases there are spells that cause this ray of sickness... Easy example, low-level spell, so be prepared to be able to handle that at any, at any time. The next one on our list would be being prone. Now, prone, as you would expect, you, you've been knocked over. You, you could be taken down to a knee, knocked on your butt, flat on your back, however you want, want it described or how the DM describes it to you. You are not standing and re ready to fight at this moment takes half your movement to to stand up from being prone but while being there you're going to suffer some effects then you can be prone from a low level spell like grease or a minotaur's charge or even the bite of a wolf can knock you over absolutely and you know once once you're knocked over they're going to they're going to lay into you with ease because as said monsters are going to have advantages if they're if they're trying to attack you while you're on the ground as a sidebar, though, to being prone, I will mention there are times when it is actually beneficial. If you are actually under fire from missile weapons, it's actually advantageous to be prone. So it's a it's a, a hit or a miss. If the enemy fire is coming in and there's no melee combatants, being prone will give them disadvantage. So that brings us to restrained. And this falls under basically grappling. So re restra restrained is you are, you are being held and are having a, you know, a worse time at, at fighting free. You're, you're held, you're not moving. So you've already grappled and now you've lost. So that, that, that's what restrained really looks like. So there are, there are spells that can cause the restrained condition. Vard's Black Tentacles or Entanglement or Entangle spell. There's also the Imprison spell that can leave you chained, literally. <laughs> And uh, that could, that is really bad because you're there until someone turns it off. And then, of course, mon monsters, if you've ever seen uh, any, any massive spiders where their web is big enough to catch you, that, that can give you the restrained condition as well. Yeah, there's several monster spiders, several different types of spiders in the monster menu, as well as spider-like creatures like the Ettercap. So we move on to Stunned, as we're almost finished this list. 
So stunned uh, doesn't happen nearly as often from monsters and such, but things like the monk's stunning strike and various spells will do it to you. A lot of the spells that are going to give you this stun, stun condition, you've got power word stun and divine word. You as a player probably don't have to worry about divine word. Uh, that, that's for more of the, the outsiders that have, that have come in. But they, they do cause that condition to, to happen, just not to you as a player. And finally, we have the worst condition of all, and that is unconscious. Easiest way to become unconscious is to fall asleep. Failing that, just have all your hit points knocked away and you'll be unconscious. One's not so bad. One, not so good. <laughs> now, as, as, as we saw before, you know, things stack together. So you're, if you're unconscious, you're incapacitated. They go hand in hand. You're probably prone. The, uh, the spell Eye Bite can cause you to, to go unconscious. Again, that's another low-level spell, so be careful about it. And let's not leave off monster attacks. The Jackal Wear has the ability to do an attack that can cause you to be unconscious as well. Just by looking at you. So if you have any, any questions, any issues in regards to conditions, you can put that down in the comments below, and either ourselves or some of our awesome fans will be more than happy to answer those questions for you. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to look for that link in the description and use that one-time coupon code to Easy Roller Dice. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.